the, the idea of myth uh, really fascinating as it's, as it's evident in every culture, whether it's you know, ancient or primitive or, or you know, contemporary, these, the same kind of stories crop up, and which is why I find it such a, an interesting outreach uh, into society and, and think that we, by comparing and cross-referencing uh, such stories, we can learn a lot about ourselves and, and our modern society. That context, and, and by changing context, with the same story, it can mean a completely different thing, or it can. Uh, but you know, there's always the same kind of lines running through, through no, no matter kind of where these stories come from. They, they often have uh, similar messages. I guess it is a sculpture. It's. Um, so no, there's a. Fun, it's hard to label it, but whether it's installation or sculpture, I'll, I'll come. I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, so this is called Adam. Um, it's based on uh, an article I read that that tells us about how uh, the sculpture of Adam made by Rodin uh, was found at ground zero after falling from um, a gallery sort of on, I think it was the 100th floor on, uh, in the World Trade Center. Okay. Um, so that in itself is just this amazing story where we've got um, a very literal kind of fall of man where you've got Adam just falling along with everything else. Uh, I think like quarter of a mile or something. Um, and the statue itself was found pretty much unharmed. It was snapped at the ankles at the weakest point of the sculpture. Um, but other than that, you've got this, you know, amazingly intact sculpture having come falling such a long way. Um, and and yeah, I think it's such a great story that I, I wouldn't say this piece of work does is for glory, but it's just a, a section of the work, and I'm continuing to develop kind of a body of work around the story. Um, but this particular piece. Um, I wanted to sort of give, give focus to the, f to the feet and the base of the sculpture, although um, the, the entire Rodin piece was found kind of pretty much intact, apart from the snap. Um, just the idea that, you know, we think of it as our grounding point, our base, like the strength and the, the pedestal that uh, supports such a beautiful object. Um, which brings me back to the idea of whether it's sculpture or installation, whereas normally this would kind of be the, the bottom, the, the, the pedestal of the object. Um, now in our installation, the, the commercial trolley and all this industrial rubbish becomes its pedestal and then the feet become, you know, an object of sculpture in themselves. Um, so I wanted to incorporate the idea of the mess and destruction. So I guess it's also a comment about the state of how we perceive classical art as something. So, so I, w I wanted to capture all this rubble and um, uh, I wanted it to have a, a sense of, you know, aggression or violence or, or um, proof to a history of, of violence, something obviously with a lot of force has, has decapitated the, the feet and, and, the, and bent the metal. I wanted it to be like an admonition of, of the fall of man, the fall of society. So it's this thing that's, that's happened before and then we talk about, but it's, it's, almost, uh, it's still going on and it's something, uh, whether it's not a warning, but, but you know, pointing to the facts of letting us look at uh, you know, the fall of our society. Obviously I realise it's a very few people, if anyone has ever been, have heard of this story. Um, so I wanted to make the piece um, work without that knowledge um, and keep it quite ambivalent, you know, as to, um, uh, you know, if you were to approach the scene not, not knowing what's going on, just uh, a, a piece to make people ask questions, you know, what's gone on here, what's, what's caused this destruction, what, where's the rest of the statue, and, and who's picking up the pieces with this, this kind of bizarre collection of, of junk and and sculpture or something that was once a sculpture and now might be junk.